everyone, welcome back to video vlog number two. Um, vlog. Vlog. We are vlogging from Montana. That's correct. Um, we are here with McKay Photography Academy taking pictures of some really, really cool animals. Yes. So, I mean, for those who haven't followed along closely, uh, this trip is kind of split into two portions. There is a portion where we've worked with the Animals of Montana group, um, and that is finished up as of today. Uh, we were there for three days, clients, and everybody were there for two days, let's say two days. Um, fantastic experience. Let's run down through the list of animals that we photographed. Lion. A lion. A baby lion. A young a lion. A baby lion. Five months, six months old, Barbary Coast lion. Freaking baby lion. If you're following along on Instagram, you've seen a picture. Um, uh, if you follow along on Twitter, I just tweeted out a picture I took tonight of him with crazy zoom lens set up. Um, not that you need it because you can go pretty much right up to him. Uh, so, lion. Snow leopard. Snow leopard. Snow leopard. Incredibly rare creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Um, uh, mountain lion. Mountain lion. Uh, Siberian tiger. Siberian tiger. Um, a bear. A grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. Um, any more cats? I feel like. Mount, that... Did you say you said mountain lions? Yeah. Bob uh, bobcat. Bobcat bob today. Cat. Yep. Um, a porcupine. Porcupine named Mr. Prick. Very shy porcupine. He was a little shy. Um, uh, baby pine martin. Young pine martin. Oh, you call him a baby. Yeah, okay, fine. Young, Young pine martin. He was really Which cute. Which is, they're in the weasel family. Super cute. Bust up through the snow. Look around. Go back down underneath the snow. Really just having a lot of fun. Yep. Um, is that it? Feel like... I feel like we're missing something. The yeah. wolves. Oh yeah, the, the wolves. The wolves, a pack of wolves. Mm -hmm. Now, so for people who don't know, uh, so many animal photos that you see online are taken at wildlife parks, or zoos, uh, and places like that. Animals of Montana isn't really a wildlife park, and it's definitely not a zoo. Uh, these are trained animals, um, some more trained than others, that are released in areas for you to photograph uh, and sometimes they're led back and forth by treats or by just calling. Some of them are very well trained, amazingly trained, more trained than our house cats Liam and Bean oh, yeah. and these are giant cats. Uh, so it's it's been just an incredible experience because many times there really is virtually nothing between you and the animal and the distance from you to the animal. I've been looking at some of the participants' pictures and well, in my own pictures, and there are times where a 70 to 200 millimeter lens is way too much zoom because the animal is literally walking in front of you right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's quite an amazing experience. Uh, you know, talking with David of David McKay of McKay Photography Academy, he said, you know, it's always really hard to kind of get across to people what these trips are like. You can show them video, there's everybody taking pictures of the animal, but until you're sitting there and that tiger bounds up to the treat that they threw to him and stops literally inches in front of your lens. And makes eye contact with you. Yeah, makes eye contact with you. It's crazy. Yeah, you had an amazing position, so I posted a mountain lion picture today of they're training them to jump between uh, two things. These animals are used for a variety of uh, movies, commercials, uh, and things of that sort. Many of them would have homes that are, I think, much rougher than um, would otherwise be. These are animals that are born into captivity, um, a, or what was the other source of the animals? These aren't animals captured from the wild. Um, so these are, you know, and they're, they're well taken care of. Uh, and, um, you know, some like the lion was in that kind of hotel they were using him as this photo yeah. prop. So he was, um, you know, rescued from a yeah, you know, yeah. poor situation so, that he would have um, ended up in. But yeah, so you were at that end of that where they're training them to jump and I mean, how close was that mountain I lion? I was really really close. 
I was yeah. very close. Yeah. And it was really, 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 really amazing. Just... Really? <laughs> I mean, it, it was... Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. it was really cool. And we can talk about it all day long, but the only way that... Yeah. And... You would know what this experience yeah. is like is just by being here. Right. Switching gears a little bit. Sorry, cut you off. Go ahead. But I think you're finishing up. I'm finished. Um, it, the, you know, the photographic side of it, it's just, it's so, it's fun. And in this incredibly compressed period of time, you get to practice taking pictures of fast moving animals, a variety of different animals and yeah. different lighting conditions, different oh, yeah. kind of conditions. Um, and so I feel like my growth as a photographer over the last two days and knowing you know what kind of shutter speeds are best for these a Siberian tiger moving really fast across the snow, you better be shooting in one two thousandths of a second to really capture everything in crisp detail. Maybe not quite that fast, but pretty fast. Uh, and so that's been a, a good experience as well. And just working with the participants and kind of coaching them through. And just, yeah, I mean, well, so one of the things that I, I'd like to say that has been really, really fun for me is just meeting all the different people that are here yep. um, and watching everybody connect in some way or another with one with one another mm -hmm. um, throughout the trip because you're you know you're here and you don't really know anyone but at the same time you know we're all longing for that human connection with others and so it's just really cool to watch people connect to people that you know might not otherwise have met except for these you know these workshops and they have right. photography and these people have photography in common and their love for photography in common and they're yep. able to connect that way. Yep. Um, but also just being really close to the animals. If you guys watch us regularly, you know that I am a big animal lover, especially cats. I love cats. So being able to, you know, experience this workshop and being so close to these animals and just watching them like there would be times where it would just be like you know I would get some pictures I would get some footage and video and then I would just watch them because they're just amazing they're yeah. just and yeah. I wouldn't get to do that you know anywhere else so right. it's really a really 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 amazing experience yep um, I have a question for you what? what's better one kitten or five puppies? <laughs> you don't have to answer. <laughs> okay. Just want you to think about that. Because <laughs> um, there were puppies here as well. There were no kittens except for just, well, the bobcat you could kind of pretend was a kitten. And the baby was, lion. So, and the baby lion. Um, yes. Which baby just, lion was a kitten. <laughs> yeah. A was. big Big kitten. kitten. A big kitten who plays with the dogs, and I, you saw some of that footage in the other. And I think we're going to roll some some footage, um, if we can, uh, you know, in this video as well, just to, if we can get that all edited and to you all. So we're now um, switching gears and really kind of starting to photograph the scenery and the scenic side. Uh, we're headed towards Yellowstone tomorrow. But actually, before we do that, let's wrap up and talk a little practical. People are waiting to hear, been shooting with these different lenses uh, and still not ready to do a, an official review, but if you have the money, the Canon 100 to 400 is a fantastic lens. Oh yeah. Focus is so fast you don't notice it, especially when using it with something like the 7D Mark II. And can I say the 7D Mark II is an absolute pleasure to use on this trip. It focuses so amazingly fast. It is just blazing fun to use. And so I've been shooting with that a bunch. The light has been good. So, you know, full frame versus crop. I had both available to me. I'm going to choose that crop with the amazing fast focus most of the time. I, sh I shot with both back and forth. So the 100 to 400, $2,100, weather sealed, a decent sized filter ring, not some whacked out 105 millimeter like the Sigma, uh, really easy to hand hold, really uh, fast focus, I said. It's got a tension ring, so you can adjust how easy it is to zoom from 100 to 400. That's a nice range. Just really nice. Next, 
the Tamron 150 to 600. It is getting bigger, but um, it also you should use sharp. It's a wacky filter size. It's 95 millimeter filter hmm. size. Um, very sharp. Seems to be in the center as sharp as the Sigma, which is another thousand dollars. I haven't done careful. I need to do careful with the 100 to 400 and looking at those. I haven't looked at matched all those up. But today we did a careful test. So the Sigma 150 to 600 versus the Tamron 150 to 600. I do not see an appreciable difference in the center. I find both to be very sharp. Um, and so then the Sigma. So heavy. It's so, so heavy. heavy. And the focusing ring. Um, we haven't figured out any way to loosen it um, at all. Uh, so you've got this really, well, I don't really... find it very tight, though. But no, it... I, I find it's not okay, super tight. But mm -hmm. if you were in a situation where you're trying to follow wildlife or a sporting event um, and your subject is moving close and far away from you and you've got to, on a whim, just change your focal length, it's not really that easy to handle. And I think that the you know, that focusing ring and, you know, I guess I'm really tired. <laughs> it wouldn't no. be a vlog without Christina being really tired. Yeah. We, I mean, we were outside in the chilliness. Yeah. I don't want to call it cold because it was, I mean, it's chilly, cold. All right, anyway. But anyway, the, just the, the, the lens is huge and the focusing ring is, is, you know, very tight. So in order to be able to refocus, you just can't do it quickly enough to be very, um, just, I don't know, to be able to get the shot is what I'm saying. So I think it might be able to focus really fast. It's probably pretty, the focusing speed is probably comparable to the Tamron, but in terms of, you know, being able to maneuver Use. the lens right. and controlling it and being able to nail your focal length and get the focal length that you want, um, and being able to do it quickly, I think that that could slow you down significantly. It is not a lens that lends itself well to handheld shooting. You not can do it, you can do it, but it's not great. The Tamron, which reaches out about the, well, is the same focal length, um, is much smaller. No, not much smaller. It's smaller it's lighter. and lighter. It's lighter. And, and as, as a result, you can hand, held that, hand hold that better. Yeah. Still, neither of them are as nice as the compact 100 to 400. Yeah. Agreed. So, mark two. Yep. Yeah. Also shot with a 400 prime f5.6 a little bit today. Very nice lens, very sharp. But how I feel, you know, I, I, I love primes. We love primes. Mm -hmm. You really love primes. Mm -hmm. um, when I feel like you're shooting with the 35 or the 50, if your framing isn't great, it's just a few steps to make it better. It's not a huge deal. When you're shooting with a long telephoto prime, like the 400, there were times with the bear, where all I could get was a little part of his face. Yeah. And and it was a hike to get to a better spot. Right. So, you know, I think it's a lot trickier um, to use that lens. And when you have something like the Tamron 150 to 600, which is the same result, uh, same, um, same price, I'd go with that more versatile Tamron. Oh, yeah. But the weight, you, you are adding an extra weight. Yep. The 400 is an integrated lens hood, which is really nice. I wish more... Lenses did nice. that as well. We'll be doing some more testing with the 2X and the 70 to 200 as well, which Ali has been shooting with mostly. They're going on a safari to Tanzania soon, so she's really trying to figure out what's the best long lens for her. She really likes the 100 to 400. She's been shooting with ours as well, um, but probably going to go with the 70 to 200 and a 2X and an converter. Extender. Those, you know, if you start with a good lens and put a 2X extender on it, you still get good results. I even shot with the 100 to 400 with the 2x extender tonight. So I was shooting at 800 millimeters, hand holding, and manually focusing because you do lose autofocus when you go above f/8 with most center focus points of lenses, cameras. But um, so sharp, still so sharp, and that's a lot of reach. So next, switching gears, scenery, practical tip. Really, when we're photographing the animals, the first thing we would think about usually is our shutter speed, making sure it's fast enough to freeze the action. Now we're stepping into scenery, and as we've been talking to participants, and David has been reminding people, uh, and Adam as well, uh, now it's really about aperture. And this mm -hmm. is, you know, I, this is one of those guides that I want to kind of set up and do a series of videos on. 
But now we're going to step up to a scene and say, you know, are we trying to capture pretty much everything in this scene in focus? If so, how much distance are we talking? And then that determines our f-stop, our aperture. And then from there, shutter speed and our ISO. Shutter speed just fast enough to make sure that you're not getting any handshake. And then ISO yeah. to equal that. Equal that? Is that a way to say it? Sure. Yeah. ISO is an afterthought, especially with our modern cameras. I, um, you know, you always can keep it down, but don't keep it down at the expense of something else, like shutter speed or after. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that, you know, you might want to keep a pretty high F number um, when you're photographing a landscape, but also you can break that rule to use it to take a very creative photo using a lower F number yep. um, if you have a particular shot in mind. So yep. rules can be broken. That's right. Um, don't be afraid to play around with things. F8? F8 is good. I don't think it's pretty rare that you need to go higher than F8 unless you're shooting with a fairly narrow lens. It's a little hard to make general statements like that, but you know, I, I feel like beginners often hear that you want that really small aperture to get that huge everything in focus and they're starting to do themselves a disservice by either running into diffraction, which I couldn't remember what that name was the other day, somebody reminded me, um, or uh, you know, starting to get too slow of shutter speed and you know, getting blur from handshake. Or just too cluttered of a background. Well, yeah, true. Yeah, good. So we're excited, we're on our way to West Yellowstone tomorrow and then snowmobiling in Yellowstone plus trips into Yellowstone on the tank bus is what I call it. I think they call it a snow coach. Um, I'm gonna miss the animals. You are. We are gonna miss the animals. Uh, Especially fantastic. the baby lion. Especially the baby lion. And they are doing a baby animals trip in June. They are. Which I don't think we're gonna be able to attend because of our schedule, but they are just starting to announce that now. There is also a helicopter to a glacier tour as part of that experience that you can add on. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll get you in touch with David because as I said, they're just starting to talk about that and we shot a little promo video. Probably some of that will be out soon. It's great. So what would you like to hear about Yellowstone, West Yellowstone, scenic, shooting scenic photography? you have any questions of that sort, Put them down below as well. We'll read over those and address them in our next vlog, which will probably be in two days again. I think this is better. We've got a little bit more content. Yeah. Um, and tomorrow is kind of just a travel day, so we probably won't have too much to talk about. Nope. Good? Questions? Thoughts? What's your favorite baby animal? Let's ask people what their favorite baby animal is. I asked out on the, uh, the Facebook group. Uh, or the Facebook page, what animal you would most likely, most like to photograph. There were a handful of people that went with wild orcas underwater, which would be pretty awesome. That would be. That's Ruby cool. says platypus. I can't tell if he's joking or not. Mm -hmm. Either way, I think it's cool. Platypus. Um, yeah. They're strange little creatures. Any furry They lay animals. eggs. Furry they're, animal. they're a furry animal that lays eggs. Yeah, but they're they're... They're slick a lot of the time, aren't they? Because they're in the in water. In the water. Swimming around, yep. doing their platypus thing. I'm sure they're cute. I love to see a baby platypus. But for now I'll settle with baby lion. Getting slow there between <laughs> statements. I think it's time to wrap. I think it's time this for up. bed. Alright, folks. Thanks bed so much time. for watching. As I said, Leave your questions, comments, thoughts down below. And a reminder that we have started a Patreon and you can support this channel, vlogs like this, and the other content I do that is usually a little bit more helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Welcome back to another video. The cross is right on my chin. It's bothering me. I can eat it. Welcome back to another video log from our Montana trip with McKay Photography Academy. I don't know why I looked at you.
because you're sitting next to me. Yep. Let's try it again. Welcome back to another vlog from our Montana. Why didn't I introduce it? Okay, go for it. 